right, welcome everybody to Open Music Sessions. Give yourself a round of applause. Yes, the studio audience is live tonight. Oh, we have a wild crowd. We're gonna try and rein them in for this insanely amazing show we have tonight. Yeah. Great to be here. I'm Daniel Reskin. I'm a, a local Denver Open Media member and stand-up comedian. I'm happy to be your host tonight on this journey of community, creativity, and some weed too, I heard later. So, well, <laughs> some exciting things. Um, thanks for joining us. This is our monthly block party uh, we do to show off basically what happens here, Denver Open Media and the the Open Media Foundation every month. It is a studio, it is a community learning center, it is a production house, it's a hangout place, it's a, a social club. There's a lot of fun things to do here and uh, it's a great way to learn how to actually take these skills and these things everyone does on their phone and make some professional quality looking video, audio, make your own TV show, all that kind of stuff. It's an exciting place. Any content creators here tonight? Any future content creators here tonight? Yeah, that's right. Let your ambitions grow tonight. Yo, yes, come in and join. We are just talking about the show. Um, and want to say hey to everyone joining us on the radio, KOMF 104.7. Say hi to our Comcast viewers on 881 HD. The CenturyLink viewers on channel 8,500 and... Nine. <laughs> one of the best ones, huh? The 8,000s. Eh, kind of shaky, but that one, it really redeems the whole 8,000s, if you ask me. Um, <laughs> excited about that. Yeah, we got a great community, a lot of ways to catch us. And of course, online at denveropenmedia.org, we do the live stream. And that's where you can check out all the content that people make, vote on it. And that's actually what decides what goes on real television. So, a lot of cool ways to get your stuff out there here. And, the stuff we will get out tonight is fine stuff indeed. Uh, we have a community spotlight tonight premiering a brand new series uh, made by very own Denver Open Media people. Uh, the Mile High Chronicles is going to premiere tonight, everybody. Give it up. Rocky Mountain High. Uh, and also, we have a comedian as we do every month. This guy is hilarious. He's all over the scene right now. Uh, give it up for Mr. Anthony Armstrong. He's going to be here. And, of course, closing out our show, we always have an amazing musical guest, and tonight is no exception. Give it up for Pop It. Pop It. Yes, indeed. Well, introduction complete. Check. My job's done for now. Allow me uh, to bring up... Uh, the executive chairman, director, all the, all the important sounding words are basically this man's title, um, to take things from here. Everyone give it up for Tony Shawcross. Uh, so Daniel's job, which he always does such a lovely job of, is riling up the crowd, and I'm going to ruin all the buzz <laughs> that he created before we bring up uh, our community spotlight. Um, uh, so... Uh, Open Media Foundation is here to put the power of media in the hands of the community, help people, anybody, uh, ha have a larger voice in shaping um, public awareness and shaping public policy. Um, there is a, one of our teachers and community members, his name is Patrick Sheridan, uh, has been part of this community for a long time. Last year, uh, a little over a year ago, he won our Independent Voice of the Year Award. And... Um, <coughs> I think that's actually showing on our other channel right now on channel 56. Not that we want you to change the channel if you're watching at home, you just stay right here. But uh, he passed away yesterday uh, from pancreatic cancer. And while we don't want to uh, kill the vibe of, of, of these celebrations, uh, we also do want to just pay tribute to, to Patrick and uh, all that he's done for this community. He ran a project called the Emerging Filmmakers Project for uh, many years and helped just literally hundreds and hundreds of local filmmakers get their start uh, and is just someone who gave so much to this community and he's, he's going to be dearly missed. So uh, if you feel like it, you can switch over to Channel 56, watch him get an uh, Independent Voice of the Year award from last year. Uh, also, we just did this awesome countdown show uh, back in October last year where, um, uh, you know, it's something if we were going to do a tribute 
for him now. Uh, it's something that we, it's the same thing we would have done, but we got to do it while he was here with us. And uh, a, about a dozen local filmmakers showed projects that he had a, played a major hand in, helped them with their scripts or with acting or producing or whatever. Uh, and uh, so I just want to, I just want to say thank you to Patrick. Our heart goes out to all of his family and friends and loved ones. And just remind the rest of us too that uh, just every moment is a gift and, uh, you know, we, sh we need to just make the most of what we have. And I'm grateful for all that time we had with him. So again, sorry to bring people's night down. Uh, but, um, again, part of, uh, a big part of what we're doing here is just helping make anybody make sure anybody has the opportunity to make films make movies and s we do a community spotlight uh, every month for open music sessions and the community spotlight for this month uh, is Eric Galatis who's going to talk to us about Mile High Chronicles so Eric do you want to come up here please there you are uh, and I'll just share this microphone with you <laughs> um, so uh, Eric uh, tell us a little about your project also you've been doing community media work uh, in Denver and before that in Seattle for a long time. So anything you want to say about, about, uh, about the project that you're doing and the kind of context of why you're doing it? Sure. Um, well, I want to say, first of all, thank you very much for allowing us to, to do the premiere of uh, Mile High Chronicles at uh, Open Media Foundation, Denver Open Media. Thank you very much for having us. Um, I'm also on the board of <laughs> Open Media Foundation, so a plug, anyone who wants to join, um, pl please uh, step up and uh, you really can do everything that they're saying that you can do um, with the tools that are made available here. Um, become a member, uh, volunteer, join the board um, if you'd like to. Um, I, uh, I came here from Seattle to work uh, with Free Speech TV, but before I was working with Free Speech TV, I, I, I had my hands in a lot of different community media projects. So. Uh, th this, this place is near and dear to my heart. Um, Mile High Chronicles is a new TV series for the web, and it's all locally sourced. So everything you see in the series will come from Denver. Uh, all the musicians that are featured in the series are from Denver. Uh, we have some excellent uh, guest directors for the series, uh, including Tony Shawcross. We'll, we'll be directing, yeah. I believe, episode four. I can't remember. Um, Mayor Trevathan is, is directing an episode. We've, we've got a, a really exciting casting session that's happening tomorrow at this location here. And we hope to kick off the production in about a week. Uh, we're, we, we can't announce yet uh, exactly who our cannabis sponsors will be, um, but we are lining up some pretty interesting local cannabis sponsors who are gonna help promote it. Uh, but the story of the series follows Cassandra She's a young, visionary computer programmer. She, she's also an immigrant, and so we think it's a kind of a topical and timely story. And she's new to Denver. She doesn't know anybody. She's driving for this rideshare program called Drift. Um, and one of the features of Drift is that you can smoke uh, in, in any of the cars that are, that are uh, driving. Um, and she meets a lot of different colorful local characters in Denver and their favorite cannabis products. Um, and eventually, by the end of season one, she will have helped build community. A lot of this is about community. A lot of the series is about building community uh, to confront um, a group of Trump-emboldened neo-Nazis. So that's where it's going for season one. That's basically it. And is that what we're going to see? You want to tell people what we're about to watch? Sure. Um, this, what we're going to see now is the pilot episode. It's episode one, and it's about five or six minutes long. Each episode's going to be very short. Um, and we'll meet Cassandra, the protagonist, and we'll get, we'll get a little setup of what you'll see in each episode, uh, what she has to deal with. Um, oh, and each episode also contains a classic scene from a classic movie. So if you want to keep your eyes peeled, it's disguised, but you, you might be able to figure it out. So you guys are in for a great show tonight, for reals. Uh, the comic is great, and uh, uh, Pop It, Molly Rainey, is maybe my favorite act in Denver right now. So you guys are really in for a treat. It all starts with Mile High Chronicles. Uh, let's roll the clip.
chance to talk to the director at the Sunset Center. You know, the old folks home? I'm going to host a movie night there. That's cool. Is that where you work? No, no, I'm a contractor. I do big data entry for Vista returns. They're basically the Uber of insurance actuary projections, predicting when people die. But ultimately, I'm going to be a filmmaker. <laughs> why, why does your smoke smell like your strawberries? That's Blue Dream. It's 25% off this week at Denver Chronic. So, what do you do when you're not driving for the Uber of extreme bargain ride shares? Um, not much. You don't have a food cart or a, a startup? You're not worried about driverless cars? I'm working on a few mobile apps. So, what did they say about the movie night? It's cool as long as I do it on my own hours. Like, Bernice was psyched. Like, she's a real firecracker. Mm -hmm. I was just telling her we'd finally get a chance to watch The Godfather. You know, that's her favorite. And then all of a sudden... So what happened? It was crazy. Bart, spoiled rotten, still wets the bed. Bernice loaned me is tapped. I don't think I have any cash. It's okay. This one's on me. Really? Thanks. Oof. Hey, here's my cell. Keep me posted on your apps, okay? Mm -hmm. They sound really cool. <laughs>
Exxon Mobil says it's expanding drilling operations in Siberia's thawing Arctic region. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson called the move a giant step forward in the nation's quest for energy independence. Alfonso Richards, principal of Oklahoma City's Grouse Creek Elementary School, said the kids are wet, but they're okay and out of harm's way. The report from a former NASA scientist now working with the World Ecological Organization says the world trend is signs of letting up. Please put out your joints now. We're gonna resume filming. Okay, everyone, under your seat with the with the paraphernalia right now. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm excited for uh, the rest of that. That's awesome. Life, death, marijuana. I'm sold. I'm into it. Um, entertainment, folks. That's what we're here to do. Uh, and to remind you, there's a raffle going on, and you yourself can win a membership and a free class to Denver Open Media. Uh, be sure to fill that out. We're going to do that at the end of the night. That's how I started and got pulled into this whole disaster. Um, it is wonderful. Speaking of wonderful, you guys ready for your comedian tonight? Oh, yeah. All right, I'm going to assume that lackluster <laughs> smattering of enthusiasm yeah. was like a very exciting thing. Um, I know this is a studio audience and you're usually used to being very quiet and everything, but us comedians, we feed off of your energy. We need it, we crave it, and if you do not give it to us, we will suck and blame you for it. So, uh, that's showbiz, folks. Um, not gonna be a problem, though, with this next gentleman. He is so funny. Uh, I've been on a couple shows with him. Uh, he never disappoints. Everybody, give an awesome welcome to Anthony Armstrong. <laughs> Can I get a stool? Can I get a stool? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, iPod dude. <laughs> so can we agree, as a community, as a collective of minds, that the weed is too strong? Can we agree that it's, it's too strong? It gets you too high. I got so high one time, I drove to the stove and walked home. That's too high. It's way, it's too strong, man. Reported my car stolen and everything. Police was mad as hell when they called me and told me they found my car at Safeway. I'm gonna tell you about the first time I got high, which is only about a year ago. Because where I'm from, the only way people got high is they smoked. I don't like to smoke, so I never got high. But when I moved to Colorado, and I found out you can eat the weed, yeah. I'm like, okay. I'm gonna eat the weed. <laughs> I shouldn't have ate the weed. <laughs> I didn't know though, because don't nobody tell you. They just let you go there and bad and they giggle. I know you giggle. I know you laugh, because we don't know no better. Who? Anybody ever had edible before? Anybody ever? Okay. For those of you that have never had edible before, I wanna paint a picture of what it's like to have an edible, just in case you wanna know. I want you to imagine that you're walking in the park on a beautiful day. It is a beautiful day. The sun is shining, the birds are singing, and that walk lasts for about an hour, hour and a half, depending. Then for some reason, you don't know why, somebody runs up behind you, straps a jetpack to your back, and you just blast off. <laughs> now at first you're like, wee. 
this is nice. I like this. But then you get higher and higher, and then you're like, <laughs> okay, all right, <laughs> okay. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared now. But that's okay, because there is no possible way I can stay this high for that long. Now, here's the story. It was me and my homegirl. She had never been high before either. But she told me she had a friend that made weed brownies. I said, cool, have him bring us two weed brownies. <laughs> this dude shows up to the house with a pan full of weed brownies. There were no instructions. There wasn't a manual or a handbook that came with the pan of weed. He just left a whole pan of weed with two people that knew absolutely nothing about weed. <laughs> So we started out slow. We took a little piece. We ate that, waited 10 minutes, nothing happened. We're like, okay, maybe we didn't get enough. <laughs> now, if you notice, know there's people laughing at me already. Because <laughs> they know I didn't messed up. I didn't know. <laughs> so we got another piece. Ate that, waited 10 minutes, nothing happened. Got another piece and another piece. We ate the whole pan, <laughs> weed brownies, and we drunk milk with them. <laughs> 30 minutes go by, my homegirl gets to tweaking out. She gets to saying stuff that's real weird, but it kind of make you think. <laughs> She's sitting on the couch next to me. She stands up, she goes, why don't our buttholes fill up with water when we take baths? Is it airtight? I said, And then she passes out, goes to sleep, leaves me that thought in my head. <laughs> but I don't feel nothing. Another 30 minutes go by, I don't feel nothing. I'm like, dang, am I immune to the weed? <laughs> I am not immune to the weed. <laughs> well, I was high. I was so high, I didn't know I was high. And that's dangerous. Because I was walking around my house doing crackhead activities, but I thought I was making rational decisions. <laughs> Now, um, I told y'all we drunk milk with the brownies, and I don't expect any of you guys to know this, but all black people are lactose intolerant, okay? <laughs> Every last one you know. Look, the black male, he's shaking his head like, yep, verification, there you go right there, proof. So I had to take a, I had to take a dump. <laughs> I go to the bathroom, I get on the toilet. The weed had my body so relaxed. I couldn't push the poop out. I couldn't do it. I was straining, and it wouldn't come out. I'm just sitting on the toilet, smiling hard as hell, just <laughs> with nothing moving. I couldn't believe it. I am a dare graduate. How did I find myself here? <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do, and I look over, and I see the plunger. Don't get ahead of me. <laughs> I mean, it works when the toilet is stopped up, so technically this should work. The only thing that stopped me from plunging my own butthole is I fell asleep on the toilet. <laughs> I was asleep for two hours. You ever sit on the toilet and your legs fell asleep? How long does that take? Five, ten minutes? I was on the toilet for two hours. I was paralyzed from my toes up to my nipples. I couldn't feel nothing from here down. I didn't know what to do. I just rolled off the toilet and laid on the ground like Lieutenant Dan from Forrest Gump. That's all I could do, man. That's all I had. It's too strong. Get you too high. Oh, man, it's good being in Denver, man. We're from Chicago. Happy New Year, y'all. It is still. Shout out to you and stuff. Now, I went to my first Caucasian Christmas this year. Oh my God, it was so beautiful. It looked like the postcards, man. Because let me tell you something. When it comes to holidays and, and decorations, white people ain't to be messed with. They do. I don't want to sound ignorant, but I didn't know mistletoe was a real plant. I didn't know, because I've been plastic. We hand out down through the generations. We had that thing for 175 years. It's a real plant that grow. I didn't know that. So I went to these folks' house, man. The food was beautiful. Oh my God. It was bland, but it was beautiful. It's beautiful. 
The turkey was Holly Berry Brown. Oh. You know what Holly Berry Brown is? That's as dark as something can get before white men get uncomfortable. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. FCC, we cool with that one? Okay, just wanna make sure the FCC cool with that one, man. <laughs> you remember when we thought kids were the future? Now it's here and it's weird. Like they weird, is it just me? I wanna make sure I'm not just picking on them. They weird, right? Okay, I was in Walmart the other day. I'm standing in line, I'm minding my own business. I'm trying to check out, I ain't bothering nobody. Standing there. All of a sudden, from behind me, I hear a lady's voice go, stop, stop, get your fingers out your butt. <laughs> I turn around, it's a lady, and it's a little boy standing behind me. The little boy got his hand shoved down the back of his pants. The lady sees me looking at him, she goes, I'm sorry, sir, my son had an anxiety condition, and when he gets nervous, He sticks his fingers in his butt. I said, check this out, lady. That's not normal. Mm -mm. That's not normal at all. Then she told me, she said, well, I took him to see a psychiatrist, and the psychiatrist assured me that it's just a phase, and it's completely normal. I said, look at here, lady. There is no sticking your finger in your booty phase. Normal little kids don't do that. Who is this little boy psychiatrist, Ron Jeremy? You need a second opinion. <laughs> So we sit there and we continue to talk. All of a sudden, the little boy takes his hand out of his pants, sticks his fingers directly in his mouth. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. And I'm standing there like, um, is that normal? She said, no, that's new. I said, he needs to be on medication. Why do you have this little prepubescent serial killer out here at Walmart <laughs> sticking his fingers in his butt, touching all the fruits and the vegetables? I went to the manager. I said, excuse me, sir. You need to throw away all the fruits and the vegetables. <laughs> He gets a little nasty little boy over there sticking his fingers in his butt, touching all the produce. Now, I don't even know if that's true, but I want to err on the side of caution, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't want one of you guys, an unsuspected, innocent victim, go to Walmart, buy a nice, beautiful bag of Gala apples, you get them home, you want to eat them, but you can't, because a bunch of little doodle prints all over them. Because this little boy is having an anxiety attack. Whoop your kids. Whoop them. They need to be beat. My mama didn't care. She didn't care what she hit me with. Whatever was close was cool with her. So one time I got in trouble at school. I came home, she was sitting on the porch waiting for me. I walked up the stairs, she started talking to me. I rolled my eyes at her. My mama reached up, grabbed the wind chime off the hook. <laughs> started whooping me with that. Have you ever hit with a wind chime before? It hurts. But it sounded so beautiful, though. It, it was the most elegant butt woman I've ever had in my life. It was really nice. Welcome. Like I said, I'm originally from the West Side of Chicago, and man, um, I grew up around all black people. But now I'm here in Colorado, I ain't around majority of white people. That's fine. Huh? I dig y'all. Y'all cool, man. Y'all I feel like y'all don't get no credit for beautiful things you've given to the world either. Brunch, thank you. Thank you, it's delicious. Trail mix, come on, it only makes sense. Dips, white people make the most amazing dips. I don't even know what an artichoke is. Put it in a dip, delicious. We got a potluck at work, potlucks, thank you. Put it, bring all the delicious foods in one area. It's a great idea. Thank you for that. We had a potluck at work. This woman brought some buffalo chicken dip. I said, stop playing with me. I said, white people did not turn hot wings into buffalo dip. That's unfair. This is a trap. I know a trap when I see one. This is a trap. I ain't believe it, man. I got a, a chip. I said, give me a chip, please. Give me a chip. I dipped it. I ate it. I said, Samantha, slavery? Forget about it. Jesus, this is delicious. Mmm, this ranch in here. I think I, I think I taste ranch. Mmm. I used to think black people couldn't be racist, but now I don't know. I had a friend of mine come visit me from Chicago. When he came up, I took him to this bar. The bar had ping pong tables in the back. So I asked my friend, I said, hey man, 
You want to play some ping pong? He said, man, I don't want to play no cracker ball. <laughs> I had to ask. I said, why would you call ping pong cracker ball? To which he replied, because that looked like something white people do. Hmm. I didn't know what he was basing his assumptions off of, so what I told him was, hey, man, I don't think you can call ping pong cracker ball because ping pong was invented in China. He said, I don't care. He was real angry. I don't know why. But after the conversation, I was curious because I didn't really know if ping pong was invented in China. I'm just used to seeing Chinese people play it. So I just assumed that's where it came from. <laughs> Which is kind of messed up now that I say it out loud, but whatever, that's not the point. I looked it up, and what I found out, this is true, you can look this up if you want to. Ping pong was invented in the 19th century in England. It was a game that was played by the elites after dinner. They would use cigar boxes as a paddle. They would use books as a net. I didn't know that. I thought that was pretty cool. So as it turns out, it is something white people do. Touche, touche, <laughs> black man. Cracker ball forever. My name is Anthony Armstrong. Thank you, guys. I am out of here. Give it up for your host. Anthony, hilarious. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for performing for us. Still on? I'm still on? I can't hear myself. Okay, there we go. There it's we go. On. This one's just fun. I can hear it. So, so let the people know where they can follow you. You got anything going on coming up? Um, I'm all over town. I got a show tomorrow at El Chorito. If you want to come down there and check it out, uh, they told me some rules. I can't say some stuff, so I'll stop right there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm on uh, Armstrong Comedy. That's everything. Twitter, See you Instagram, right there on the TV. Oh yeah, they. Showing it across the TV, so that's me, the one that you see at the bottom. Is it the bottom or the top? I didn't see it. Bottom, lower third. Lower third of the bottom. That is the exact location where you can find all it's of right my. There. So point, there point it is again. Your feet right now. That, right here. Yeah. See over there. Boom. Got it. <laughs> it's over there. So all of you stalk him immediately online. Thank you again. I welcome you all. Come on. Let's Give it up for Anthony Armstrong one more Thank time. You. Awesome. Okay. And I'm going to gently remind everybody that uh, there is a tip jar floating around for the comedian. There will be one for the musicians as well later. But uh, he is performing out of the kindness of his heart and for Twitter followers and loose change. So, you know, anything you got is appreciated. All right. This crowd is hopped up and ready for some music, I think. You all ready for our band tonight? Yeah. Ready? ready? Yes. Oh, very excited. Um, and I imagine that they are too, the band, which I wonder where they are. Um, because these instruments are going, they don't play themselves. They will have people to play them. And I imagine they're excited to play them. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be here for that soon. Uh, in the meantime, I'd like to thank our sponsors. <laughs> It's a, it's a very important thing to do. Thank you for noticing, sir. Because without them, none of this would be possible. Or it would be, actually. We shouldn't give them too much credit. We'd find a way, okay? But they made it a lot easier for us. So the Westward, of course. You got to get your, your weekly Westward. Sexy pizza. The sexiest pizza in the tri-state area. Sexpot Comedy. They are one of the best uh, comedy groups. They're doing all kinds of shows. Check out Sexpot. Crazy Mountain Brewing Company is coursing through money of your veins right now. Um, and the Intrepid Sojourner Pro Beer Project, which sounds extremely fascinating and I know nothing about. Uh, and also KGNU, another one of the two radio stations operated out of this very place. You could be on the radio if you got that sexy voice. Native Foods as well. Putting the power. Power. Putting the power of media. And technology. Into the hands. The hands. The hands of the people. The people. The people. Denver Open Media. That's Denver Open Media. All right, the band was ready the whole time. You had to see those PSAs, though. You get your vitamins before your candy, OK, everybody? That's out of the way. Check out all the past performances online, but now it's time for the present performance, the people we're here to see. You ready for your musical act of the evening? Oh, yes. 
There's the, there's the enthusiasm. All right. Well, without further ado, uh, we're very excited to have them here. Give a great round of applause for Pop It.
These are songs about knowing yourself and all of your darkness and your light. And this is a song about being unable to accept the past and the present. <laughs> being unable to live with yourself and your actions. It's a big theme.
Understand, you don't want to hear someone screaming in your face. But I am going to do that, so if you don't want to hear that, you should get out now. <laughs> but it's hard. It's hard to be human, you know? And uh, sometimes those feelings creep in or they barge in, whether or not you want them to. And uh, this is a song about a past relationship of mine that is on my most recent album. And um, it is about, my ex-boyfriend was one of those guys who was really, really wanted to be the nice guy and the good guy. And he just could not admit that he had daddy issues. Schlag und schlag und schlag den Mund und keiner geht's weiter und weiter geht's. Ich kacke sie zu, brech mich, ich schäck ich der Abbusker rum. Run, 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 always receding to where I have come from. Silence, 
with the human condition, obviously. We're all humans. We're really all in this together. Uh, and I really love what distinguishes humans from most other species, and, and that is that we're so flawed. And that's incredible. It's really an incredible thing. Um, but you have to recognize that you are flawed. And it really ticks me off when people cannot acknowledge their flaws. They're like, oh yeah, well, I'm, um, I'm just fine. I'm, that doesn't bother me, you know? I'm doing great over here, and really you're just like screaming on the inside. I know sometimes we have to do it, but that's what this song is about. Just acknowledging your flaws, and about a phone conversation in which somebody could not acknowledge their flaws to my, to my ear. <laughs> so, that was a long, long explanation.
thank you so much for being here tonight on this first Friday. Denver Media, Open Media is a very, very wonderful resource for um, musicians like myself in Denver. Um, it gives us a lot of great opportunities and allows us a lot of resources for rentals and, and uh, opportunities for performance and opportunities to be filmed, which never happens. So that's really awesome. So thank you so much, Denver Open Media, for having me. We have just a few more songs. And I was going to say <laughs> that I, got, I, almost, I'm, I almost messed up there because I was looking at, at Blake for a moment, and I just got so into his performance. Blake is so amazing. I'm really, really okay. thankful that he's up here with me tonight. <laughs> uh, this is only the second time that we've, we've got to play a show together, um, but we've, we've played music together for almost a year now. And, uh, and also, I am extremely thankful for my uh, dancing human. And you're going to see her again real soon. This is a song about my spirit animal on one day of the year, according to a, a Mayan calendar iPhone app. And that's, the, that's where the song originated. That, that, that animal is the soaring blue eagle, which is the title of this song. But also, this song is about getting sucked into a whirlpool of a relationship that is, you're just so, so manically happy about, and you just know, oh, this is not gonna end well. But you, it's it's a cycle, and you're just getting sucked right in to the tide. Thank you so much for being here tonight and enjoying First Friday. Um, I'm certainly happy to be able to enjoy First Friday because I normally work on the weekends and finally I, I got myself out of that schedule. So um, 
Yeah, it is great. It is great to be here. And thank you again to Blake and again to my dance. <laughs> and this last song is uh, Don't Walk Out on This One, Please. <laughs> because this is a song about my ultimate fear, uh, my, my deepest, one of my deepest fears, which is that um, on an enduring level, I am not lovable. Uh, and I think many people probably have felt this at some point, and it's really hard <laughs> to cope with. So um, thank you again, and if you would like to, I do have more um, videos and music available on my website. Again, we're Pop It, and popit.us is where you can find everything Pop It.
work doing the cameras and the lighting when we were telling them, oh, by the way, we're going to do stuff all over the stage, just so you know. Uh, so thank you for making that work. And um, again, we're Pop It, and that's, that's what we got for tonight. So enjoy the rest of Arts Watch. Yeah. 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 Keep it going one more time for Pop It. Yeah. Thank you so much. Care to, um, you want to chat at all? Or you guys feel free to just, <laughs> bands don't always want to, but if you just want to, you know, at least tell us uh, where we can follow and find you. Yeah. If, yeah. if um, not my deep questions into <laughs> the art, but. Um, Poppet.us is my website, and that's Poppet like a doll. That's an old English term, affectionate term for a, a female child or woman. Um, so. That's where that comes. Also, it is another word for a voodoo doll. So it rides the divide. Yeah. But nice. anyway, papa.us. <laughs> right, right. And any uh, anything upcoming? Or are you in the Denver area primarily? Or you yeah. tour around? Yeah, no, I'm based in Denver. And I just was on a tour in December. So I'm kind of laying low right now. I yeah. will have a performance at the end of March at Syntax, which is oh, yeah, another great favorite venue. venue of mine. Um, and that's going to be with a um, experimental drum group from Portland, which is really cool. I'm very excited about it. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, and then um, just for, for those listening on the radio, definitely check this out um, online because you missed an entire other layer uh, to what was going on here tonight. Mm -hmm. And just uh, if you have any insight into just like on the surface level, I know we don't have tons of time, but just <laughs> oh, what, oh, what made you yeah. want to just do more than just music and to create a, like an experience, a theatrical experience? Ooh, that's a good question. Well, I am a very dramatic person. That's pretty obvious. <laughs> some people, no. I feel like some people are like, no, are you really intense? I'm like, listen, have you seen me ever? <laughs> <laughs> You'll know. Um, but honestly, I, I will get really serious and think, I do think it has something to do with being a solo female performer and um, feeling like I need to um, show, I need to like compensate for something, I suppose you could say. Um, and just like show, like, look, I can do this, I can do this. You know, it's kind of weird in a way. Well, I think that's a pretty honest answer. No, you're, you're, work you're working harder and <laughs> yes. it shows for yes, whatever I'm reason it is. Yes, I'm trying to work twice as hard. <laughs> yes. Right? <laughs> well, it, it pays off. And <laughs> once again, everyone, give it up for <laughs> Pop It. Thank you. That was amazing. Any, any final words? And thank you to the rest, the dancing. <laughs> Catch your breath. <laughs> you good. <laughs> Fantastic limberness, everyone. <laughs> oh, well, uh, finally, before we go tonight, uh, we do have our raffle to go through. One of you lucky attendees tonight uh, is going to be brought on the inside. Potentially, you'll be a, a member. Thank you. Oh my gosh, a silver bowl. We've upgraded. Did we get a budget? We just <laughs> usually pull this out of a trash can. This is much better. All right. But usually there's someone there to hold it for me. But watch. I was a waiter. Don't worry. <laughs> Not awkward. So I'm sorry. Table four. Was that you had lemonade? I'm sorry. I brought an Arnold Palmer. My bad. Uh, okay. The winner tonight. I like to pick one and just throw it out first. <laughs> Not the winner, just to challenge the whole raffle idea. It's not always that first person. It's that lucky second person tonight. And that person is Carlin Bartlett. Bart, Bart, something to that effect. Are you here, Carlin? No? So Carlin's party is here? Are you, there's someone to accept on Carlin? Or do we, did Carlin leave and we got to go to the next person? 
through, Carlin. Pick up, I like that. Pick up redemption for the first one. Oh my God, they're just covered in paper though. That was literally the worst time to do that. Is it, was it that one or that one? All right. I like this. It's a good narrative. I hope you win because you're already like off to a great start with the storytelling. Uh, whoo. Uh, Milu Bader. Yeah, Milu. All right. Is that your name? I, hopefully, hopefully read that right. Man, this is high drama. Uh, it's fine. We'll give it to you after. Or if you want to enjoy the moment, join me for the the outro. Uh, that's it, everyone. Yeah, please. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for allowing me to be here today. Thank you for picking up the first one, as I suggested. I knew it. Always right. Remember that. Um, okay, that's all I have to say. <laughs> one more time, everybody. Dramatic raffle. Probably the most dramatic raffle we've had here tonight. We're going to check the tapes for the fact finders. Uh, Thanks to all the sponsors. Um, Mile High Chronicles, definitely check that out. Uh, Anthony Armstrong and Poppet. Definitely keep an eye on those people because they're only getting better. Um, Crazy Mountain Brewery, Sex Pot, Pizza. The Nations. Donations. I was like, don't forget the Nations. Oh, God, I'm forgetting. <laughs> Donate, yeah, please, uh, you know, give it up for Pop It, that, that can is going around. Um, any support is appreciated as, as a struggling artist. So, um, <sighs> join us again next month. Uh, we do this every month. It's always a new community spotlight, comedy music, something new here. And uh, feel free to follow me, I'm Daniel Reskin. Uh, follow me on Twitter, find out where I'm gonna be. I'm doing all kinds of local events, starting up local politics, podcast, all kinds of things. Um, and I'm paid in Twitter followers, so I appreciate that. Everybody, give yourselves a round of applause for coming out tonight. Yeah. All the artists yeah. and everybody, yeah. the crew, everyone making this happen. It's all donation. It's all people who learn stuff here, donating their time and talent. Thanks again for coming out. Join us next time for another Open Music Sessions. Good night. Yeah.